Hello, um, welcome to my Instagram live for the Flourish Feedback. Um, I'm just going to give a couple minutes for people to join in. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, thank you guys for understanding for um, when I had to cancel my previous um, IG live before. Um, I'm actually feeling much better. My husband's feeling better. I think it was just like a random uh, stomach virus. So uh, thank you guys for joining in and for your patience. Um, so as you guys know, I had posted on my Instagram about how I hosted these Flourish Feedback Challenges for a couple years back where I asked you guys to um, try to flourish your name or a word and um, we're just going to take this time to have fun and um, I'll be just sharing some tips and hopefully some helpful tools and things that you can watch out for as you guys are working on flourishing. So my flourishing course right now is actually closing for registration today. And so maybe this is a good time and um, just a little sneak preview for what we do in our live sessions. And so in the course, um, you know, for seven weeks straight, I uh, kind of walk my students through the course materials as well as uh, look over some homeworks that people kind of submit. And then um, I kind of um, guide them through some of the exercises as well as providing some feedback so that they can know how to, um, you know, look at their homework uh, in a slightly different uh, perspective or, you know, some helpful tips along the way. So thank you guys. Uh, let me know if you guys are um, hearing me okay. I feel free to share where you're um, tuning in from. So my name is Young Hey, and I'm tuning in from California. Um, I just saw a question here. I've been doing calligraphy since 2014. So 2014 was when I first uh, learned pointed pen calligraphy. It was my first workshop for learning copper plate script. And since then I've been practicing um, and then started my business at about 2016. Okay. So we're just gonna get right into it. So um, I think this one, this post I shared um, on my post before, and I'm gonna actually start with that name, Erica, and then I'm gonna share with you, cause I know like sometimes photos can be a little bit like harder to like, you know, understand why I did that. And so I'm gonna just kind of share through my thought process. And then I actually have another uh, name I wanted to do together with you guys. So I hope you guys uh, enjoy this session. It's a very casual session. Feel free to ask me questions. Um, I'm not sure, I'm gonna try to keep it uh, under one hour so that I'm not gonna, you know, hold you guys too long. So I'm gonna flip my camera and then let's get to it. So this was the original um, submission, um, Erica Vasquez. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you guys kind of the before and just my thought process through just providing some helpful feedback and uh, some tips. Okay, so first of all, beautiful uh, ovals. I see a lot of great ovals here. Um, even this beautiful flourish here. Um, I know someone commented saying that they really like the A flourish. And so, you know, I love Instagram because it's such a hub for inspiration. And so, um, you know, when you guys see like certain um, flourishes on Instagram, you know, uh, you can totally take that and run with it and apply it to your letters. And so I know for me, even when I first started my own journey, uh, being on Instagram has been such a wealth of inspiration and place where I can just draw a lot of, um, learn a lot from. So Okay, so here is the initial thing. So my purpose through uh, giving these feedback is not to be so critical, um, but I do want to maybe share a couple of things that might, um, you know, kind of improve or the balance or just um, things that you can look for when you guys are flourishing your words, okay? So the first thing that I noticed is, uh, let's start with the, from the top to the bottom. So right here, um, you know, one thing I did point out uh, was to make sure to have um, the ovals be in, the horizontal entry floor should be more of an oval shape, okay? So this one is a little bit kind of angled upwards compared to the angle of the rest of the letters. 
So the one thing that I suggested was to make sure this is a horizontal oval entrance stroke going into your capital letter, okay? Then you have, I'm gonna leave everything just the way it was. I'm just going to kind of highlight some areas that, you know, um, that kind of stood out for me. Um, the second thing I wanted to point out here is for the uppercase letter E. Um, I noticed that the spacing here is really wide. And then the whole, um, the strokes down here is a little bit more tighter and constricted. And so in order to kind of open that up more, uh, one of my suggestions was to, instead of pulling this loop in kind of closer to the end of the letter, you can actually make this loop much bigger to close up this gap. So if we bring it up here and then we're gonna make it closer to, so now you can see it kind of bisected this oval shape here um, at about like half. So the distance between here to here is about like equal from the distance from here to here, right? Um, this is just an approximate, but let me just do that one more time. Okay. Okay, so let's look at that again. So the initial loop here bisected this shape here, the width of this bottom part of this E from the from the width number one is wider than width number two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just bring it up closer to the bottom of the E and we're just gonna make that bigger. I'm gonna pull it down just like she did here, pull it down below the letter, but instead of curving it right away, um, I'm actually going to utilize the negative space for the left side of the letter. And I'm gonna bring it up and then you can actually bring it through this side, okay? And I've kind of brought it through this way. This is all should be connected like that, okay? So what we did was we closed in the spacing here to make sure that the area of this side is relatively even to this side, okay? And that kind of brings in a little bit more of a balance. Um, Okay, then we brought down the loop below the uh, uppercase letter. And the reason why I didn't just bring it around down here is because I had a lot of space here to the left. And so whenever you have a letter that you're flourishing, make sure to look at the space around your letter so that if you can open up your flourishes bigger, um, it will really make your flourishes be more open and graceful. Okay, so um, that would be my suggestion for the capital E. I'm gonna leave everything the same and then even for the last part of this A here, the only suggestion I would make over here is to look at the spacing between your capital E and this flourish here. So, you know, the shape of this oval is done really well. I see nice ovals throughout all of these flourishes. So there's nothing really to comment regarding the end flourish here. But um, something to just watch out for as you're doing flourishes is the spacing, right? And so because the spacing between the capital letter and this end flourish, there is a lot of space here. You can actually bring up this flourish a little bit higher and a little bit more open so that you can really elongate that stroke on top. Okay, so that would be my suggestion for the last part of this A. And then for the bottom part, uh, the last name, Vasquez, um, you know, feel free to intersect that entry flourish for the V through the loop of the E. As long as this line here is all hairline and a shade is not crossing a shade, it will still look very elegant, okay? Um, the only thing here with the V, you just wanna make sure you're kind of putting it on so that it's a little bit more of like slanted compared to the rest of the letters, which is why I brought it down this way. And then we're gonna bring it up. Okay, so now we're gonna look at this side right here. So the ending for the V finishes here, and then the um, end flourish for the Z, it kind of intersects the A as well as the capital V. And for me personally, like looking at this flourish here, it seems a little bit incomplete in terms of the way it's intersected and how there's a lot of things going on with the Z and the A and the V. And so in order to kind of simplify that a little bit, um, I'm gonna change the direction of the flourish to the bottom. So instead of putting everything towards the top for the Vasquez, for the Z, I'm gonna bring that flourish to the bottom here, okay? So which is why I 
um, would probably bring it down here because once I bring it down here, all of a sudden I, I don't have anything competing with the flourish for the A. You know, it has this space right here, occupies this space. And also it frees up this space here so that I can really elongate this V flourish. Okay, so for this one, a flourish that I like to do for the V is I have this implied oval, bring it in. You can add a loop and then extend it out to the right. So because I have space here now above the last letter, I'm able to do that. And that all kind of came together because um, I decided to bring the Z flourish below instead of bringing everything on top. So those are some things to think about in terms of placement of flourishes as you look at the spacing. So if one of the spacing feels like there's a lot of flourishes going in the same direction, I like to change it up by kind of um, adjusting the placement of the flourishes either below or kind of um, having less strokes uh, come together in one area okay so instead of everything kind of formulating here I have now one flourish going down here I have a flourish that can really accentuate the V and then I can leave the a flourish kind of really elaborate just the way it is okay so moving on to this a there's a lot of spacing between the capital letter and the lowercase a here compared to the rest. And so a very quick fix, uh, when you have, whenever you have like some capital letters that either, uh, let me think, uh, especially for even like letters like W, any letter that ends like above the waistline. Um, oftentimes, I make sure to have an entrance stroke for the next lowercase letter. That entrance stroke, a simple entrance stroke can really break up that space between the capital letter and the lowercase letter, and it can really bring about kind of a more fluid uh, balance for, as you read through the word, okay? So that would be just my suggestion here to add a bit of a entry flourish here to kind of close in some of that gap. And then my other suggestion would be to look at your Q and your Z. You have two descending stem loop letters. Um, the direction for the flourish for the Q is going into your Z. And oftentimes, like, you know, depending on what word you're writing, um, you know, that's fine. You can have uh, strokes that are intersected with one another, but uh, something to think about as you're working with your flourishes is, again, the placement of your flourishes to maximize the white space around your word. And so for this Q, instead of bringing the Q flourish to your right, for me, uh, I personally would probably put this flourish more to the left, okay? So I can bring the flourish to the left like that so that it can have a space between the Q and the Z and also this flourish is going to also bring a nice stroke below uh, the first part of the last letter, okay? So that's kind of to walk you guys through why I made those comments the way I did. So this is my Instagram post that I shared. So here I said, maintain horizontal oval shape here. We made this loop in a little bit tighter to have more of an even space between this the left and the right side. And in order to avoid these big gaps and utilize the spacing, we kind of brought in that flourish to the left side of that letter. Okay, then we talked about kind of elongated and making a bigger flourish for the A to close in some of the gap between your capital letter and your N flourish. And then moving down to your V here, uh, we changed the direction. Uh, a lot of the um, edits that we did for adjustments that we did for the last the last not, yeah uh, your, the Vasquez um, the last name is to change the direction of your flourish and so the placement and the direction of your flourish will also impact the way that your overall piece will look like okay so for this Q, we brought it to the left so that we don't bring all the flourishes to the right and intersect it to the G we brought this Z flourish um, to the bottom so that we don't have all the flourishes up here on top. And then we can really maximize the spacing here by really um, bringing a really big flourish here off of the V. And so the final kind of, um, this is just, I did this with a pencil. And so this is kind of what it would look like. 
Okay, so the only um, adjustment I made here, aside from the initial flourish that Erica did, was I just, for this entry flourish for this V, I just kind of brought in that oval shape a little bit more, and I kind of tucked it in a little bit here, which is what I did right here, okay? So here is kind of a, my own, I guess, version of uh, the initial um, Erica that was submitted. So we went from here, and then this is kind of like what I did with my pencil. So I'm using a Pentel. Um, you probably saw me use this a lot. It's a Graph Gear 0.5 uh, millimeters. So I have both the 0.5 as well as the 0 0.7. So I usually like using a mechanical pencil just because I don't have to worry about sharpening it and it holds the same weight to it, okay? So I am going to move on to another example since this one is the one that I already shared on my Instagram post. So the next name that I wanted to do together is um, a name that's submitted by Tomoni, oh sorry, Tomomi, um, and I believe this is Harada, Harada. Okay, great. Okay, so beautiful flourishes. Um, you know, you can tell that um, Tomomi has experience in point to pen, in copper play, uh, really, really lovely spacing, nice shade to um, hairline strokes, and everything seems very consistent on your slant line. And so, you know, um, I, again, the purpose of doing this um, to provide is to provide just gentle feedback and just maybe slight things that I would kind of watch out for as uh, you are flourishing. So the first thing, uh, let's start from the left to the right. Okay, so the first thing I would, um, I noticed here is that there's a lot of flourish down here, okay? And then there's a lot of open space here, okay? The second thing I noticed was this flourish shape here where it goes up and it kind of tucks in is the same kind of flourish as you go up and then you tuck in, which is fine. You can definitely use the same kind of flourish next to each other, um, but this is again, like another um, suggestion that you might think about as you're working on flourishes, okay? So let's tackle the first thing is um, the spacing here, okay? So uh, when you look at this name as a whole, I notice that a lot of the flourishes kind of end up at the at the end of the word and the name, right? The first name, you have a lot of flourish here, and the last name, you have a lot of flourish, a lot of strokes at the end part here. And so in order to kind of bring a little bit more um, like balance to the word um, and the name, you can actually extend out this capital letter here and bring it below the baseline, okay? So even going, just extending it from what she already has here, you can add in a loop and then you can bring that below the baseline, okay? So already when you look at this name here, you can see that, oh, it has like flourishes throughout. It's not just clumped up in one area of the name here, okay? So that would just be one suggestion here to bring that flourish for the capital T below the baseline. And then, um, you know, you can definitely leave this flourish. I love using this flourish as well. Um, the top part here, you can leave it like this, which I think is still really nice. Uh, but I did want to kind of share, if you wanted to change it up in terms of changing the kind of flourishes that you're using. So here, let's say we are going to leave this like tucked in like this. This one, you can either bring it up and kind of finish it off like tucked in on top, just add a little bit of, you know, a variety to your flourishes so that so that not every flourish looks like similar, okay? So that would be my only thing. And this one, I'm just gonna leave it because I don't wanna change the flourishes too much of what, um, what was submitted, okay? Moving on to the last name here, okay? So you have a lot of flourish like spacing here. So usually with a capital H, um, you can definitely flourish like this. But um, if I do have a space above the lowercase letters for the first name, I also like to use this entry stroke for the H, where you have a horizontal oval entry stroke. You can definitely add a loop here. And then you can even bring this around like this. 
and then you can add in your age, like something like this, okay? Um, there's a lot of different ways to flourish an age, and that's something that we talk about in the course too, but uh, depending on like the spacing I see around my word, it's going to determine what kind of a flourish I'm gonna use. And so usually if I have a lot of space here, instead of um, kind of confining the flourish with these ovals, like, um, the slanted ovals, I will most likely use this particular variation for the H. Okay, so notice what happens here. So first, um, when you see the spacing between the I and the H, you notice that it's about, let's say the space, this is your oval shape. Okay, here's your ovals. Okay, usually the spacing between your first and the last name is about an oval shape with a part. This one is about two and like a little bit. Okay, and the reason why I think she's pushed this last name over more than maybe it should be is because she probably did this flourish first and then because this flourish is pretty close to the baseline, um, probably didn't want to like have it really cluttered in between here. Okay, so you can definitely use a pencil to sketch out your flourishes first to make sure that your spacing between your first and your last name is also going to be, um, you know, like proper spacing between. So I would probably move this H over a little bit. So if I did that, I would have an H entry flourish like this, and then you can add in your H like that. So you notice how it kind of shifts the H over a little more so that um, you can read it as first and last name like that, okay? I'm um, gonna continue on here. Um, and then for the R and the A, so you notice that the flourish for the A um, and the R is intersected right here, but also it brings all the flourishes on this side. So a couple of things here to think about is, um, instead of flourishing off of this R, something to consider is I would also um, think about flourishing off of the H. If I flourish off of the H, it actually is going to bring more spacing between and bring more balance throughout the bottom part of the name. Okay, so also depending on what you have going around your word, you can also decide which letter is the best fit for the flourishes. So in this case, I probably personally would have flourished um, off of the H, and then you can do a little bit more with the A here and just leave this as a figure eight flourish, and then kind of do this spiral and a ribbon finish, okay? The last thing I wanted to share for this uh, feedback here is for the D. So for the D, this is done really nice. I see oval shape here and oval shape here. The only thing I would also point out is to really maximize the spacing um, again. So you can also extend that out even further and bring it a little bit closer to the H because you have all this space in between your H and your D and no other ascending stem loop letters. Okay. So that would be kind of uh, my general feedback for this particular name. Okay, so we talked about bringing this T flourish underneath the baseline. We talked about maintaining good spacing between your first and your last name, making sure that the flourishes don't are not, are not like too close to your baseline so that you're pushing your last name over too much. Uh, we talked about maybe having some variations to your flourishes so that it would be more like pleasing visually uh, for your piece. And then also, you know, um, thinking about different variations for your capital letter to maximize um, and use the space well so that um, instead of using this uh, slanted oval entry flourish here for the H, I probably uh, personally would uh, use the horizontal oval entry flourish so that I can kind of fill up some of this gap between the T flourish and the H flourish. Let me know if you guys have any questions regarding this particular uh, name. If not, Let's see, um, I did want to share, there was a question I got from one of my students about the name Alfred. So Alfred, um, she was sharing, was a little bit difficult for her to flourish because of the capital L, uh, I mean the capital A with the L and then you have the F. Okay, so we're gonna kind of go through that together. 
Okay, so right now I'm using the John Neal Books Copper Plate Graph Pad. Okay, um, I also um, use the paper and ink arts. They both carry this. It's kind of like a grid paper where it has the boxes and each of these thick lines is an inch. And so I really like using this for kind of sketching out my composition and my pieces in advance before I ink it. Okay, so as I shared in my previous video live, uh, the regular copper plate A starts at the baseline. You come up here and go from thin to thick like that. And then you have to rotate your paper and make your implied oval shape and then do your exit stroke. Okay, so we talked about how in copper plate A, there's actually three different points where you can flourish off of. I usually flourish off of this point right here because we're going to go from top to bottom. You can also add a little bit of variation here. And then obviously you can flourish off of this base for this uh, A. And then you can do a lot with the crossbars too. Okay, so uh, in my uppercase uh, module for my flourishing course, it's actually three hours of content where I kind of walk you through all the possibilities of flourishing off of each um, capital letter. So it's a huge upgrade from last uh, time I recorded the course, which, um, yeah, which was only one hour. So it went from one hour to three hours and just really wanted to give students just the tools that they needed to know how to tackle these uppercase letters. Okay, so let's do the name Alfred. Okay, so we're gonna use five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna go from top to bottom. And then we're gonna leave this capital stem like this. Okay. Then the top part for this A, sometimes I like to add a little loop here. Come down. I'm gonna do my L, but I don't finish off the senders or descenders yet because I wanna see all the spacing I have around my name. K R E and then D. Okay, this one too, I'm just gonna leave it like this, but I'm gonna kind of extend out the end for the D. Okay, so what I was talking to you guys about before is one of the things that I notice here is I can really connect the crossbar for the A into my L. Okay, but in order to do that, I want to keep my F here a little bit more simplified. Okay, which is why I decided to do the tick and then curve it into your F and we'll leave the bottom open for now. Okay, so for connecting the crossbar for the A into the L, okay, we're going to just kind of sketch it out like this. Come up with flourishes you can always go above your ascender line okay and then I, I like to also add in a tick mark here for the capital letter and then for the D here I'm gonna do an implied horizontal oval here across and then because I have the spacing between the F and the D I'm going to close in that spacing with the flourish like this. Okay, so Alfred. And then the bottom part for the F, we can now kind of go crazy here because there's a lot of space below the baseline. And here, I'm gonna just do a crossbar, a straight crossbar for the F so that it's more legible, okay? So here, I'm gonna do a F. And do a figure eight flourish. You can tuck it in here. Nice to ribbon it out. Okay, before I did it like this, where we just did a simple flourish, um, figure eight flourish with a loop and then a ribbon. Okay, this time we did added another loop here. So we did figure eight. We did a big loop to intersect that um, hairline stroke, and then we kind of added a ribbon effect at the end. Okay, so that's how I would do Alfred. And then one more way I wanted to demonstrate is the second version right here. Okay, 
So this time, instead of um, connecting the crossbar to the L, I actually want to extend out the L and see if we can move that L to the right side. And in order to do that, um, this is what my thought process would be. Okay, so here is your A. And this time, let's do it. Uh, let's do it to the outside. I don't know. Just leave it like this. Kind of loop it on the outside. Okay, and then I'm going to do a small loop here like before. Here is your L, your F. This time we can do an open loop for the R. E and then D. And this time, let's see, let's leave that open for now. Okay, so for this part, I want to kind of tuck, bring this L flourish out to the right. So in order to do that, I'm going to first close up this F. Kind of like your, this is your basic copper plate F. It goes like up, a Sunday sun loop, and then it kind of stops right here. But I'm going to add a flourish down here, so I'm, that's why I didn't finish this letter. Here, L, I'm going to bring it around, tuck it in. Tuck it in. I'm going to maintain that spacing here, okay, as I'm doing that. And I want to kind of extend that out to the right. But um, there's two ways to do the D. You can do a full pressure stroke and do an under curve stroke, under turn stroke. But I also like to cross it through when it's a loop. Okay, so because of that, I'm going to add this to be a loop. And then extend out that end part of the ending for the D. Let me just... Then from here, I can add a cusp or a little loop and I can kind of bring it through. I find it really pretty when you can kind of bring it through the loop. And this is gonna be all a hairline stroke, okay? So I don't know if you guys can notice, um, when I flourish, I like to kind of like intersect the strokes um, as long as it doesn't look too cluttered or too tight. Um, I really find that to be really pretty, which is why I also like to connect kind of like two purposes together. So this ascending cell loop is also functioning as a crossbar for this A. And I just find that it's really nice when you can build that kind of relationship with the flourishes. Okay. And then for here, uh, we have this F. Uh, I'm going to add that like comma dot at the bottom of the base here. And then for the A... We can just do a kind of a curved crossbar with a tick like this. And then the bottom part, we can, let's do a little bit more simple by just doing a loop and then having that implied oval, like not finishing, not intersecting it into that F, but we're going to leave it nice and open. And you still see that implied oval shape right here. Okay, inside there. Okay, so these are uh, two ways I would probably do the um, name Alfred. Um, with this A here, you can always bring that in like this and then do it like another loop. Okay, so we talk about this in the course too, but there's a lot of different elements to think about when you're flourishing. You think about loops, you think about, you know, uh, hairline shades, you think about white negative space, you think about um, doing cusp, adding when to add a cusp, when to add a ribbon, like um, how to uh, combine the flourishes and have multiple functions. And so, um, yeah, so that's all part of the things that we talk about in my Fearless Flourishing course. Uh, the class starts tomorrow, um, and so I guess this live is also a good preview for what we do um, during our live session. So usually for the seven-week course, I do these uh, feedback similar to what I just did with you guys here um, with um, some tips. So I take some 
you know, group feedback from homeworks that I get from students. And then I kind of go through some tweaks or things that I would suggest to uh, improve their flourishes. And then all students uh, are welcome to join in for future rounds as well. So it's not just two live sessions, but I actually have a student uh, this round who's joining for the fourth time. Okay, so um, that's really exciting to see because even with each time that they join, um, they see their own improvements and things like that. So um, let me know if you have any questions about the live session or even um, about my course. Uh, the doors are closing today, so I won't be opening it again until most likely the fall. Okay, so um, you can find out more information on my website, uh, logosclothingfree.com uh, slash fearless flourishing. And then I'll be closing doors so that um, for the next seven weeks, I can really focus on my students and kind of walking them through. Okay, so all of the, um, the course handouts are also included in the registration. So this is one of the examples that I just worked on this week. And so uh, this is kind of like an add-on. Uh, my students have asked about like double letters or, you know, they have specific questions about even like triple letters and things like that. So um, I try to do what I can, you know, uh, to make updates. And last year was when I refilmed the entire course and it kind of like added like a couple more hours to the course uh, content. And, um, and so these are some of the things that they had requested for um, just having more handouts um, in addition to the course scans. Okay, so um, let me know if you have, um, hello, uh, yeah, if you have any other questions that you want me to um, help answer during this live session. Uh, I can wait for a couple of minutes if you guys have any uh, questions for me regarding flourishing or regarding my course. Um, let's see. I just want to make sure I don't have any other things that I wanted to go over here. If not, I hope this live session was helpful. I'll make sure to save it and I'll have it saved under my profile so that you guys can access it and watch it again. Um, and hopefully I can do these live sessions more in the future without getting kicked off or, you know, things like that to give you a little bit more uh, preview and help and help you guys along in this way. Okay, so thank you guys for joining um, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.